this is the road in. There are no guardrails. So Bill believes he's seen a couple of targets. That potentially could be a vehicle. For nearly 11 years, the family of Nicola Celeste has searched for answers about the disappearance of the Sheffield man. Nicola Celeste was last seen driving through Sheffield in November 2008. There were extensive searches, but the 69-year-old and his car were never found. At first, it's um, really hard and yeah, it's a very traumatic time. We're coming up to nearly 12 years, so it's, um, yeah, it's never easy and it doesn't seem to get any easier. We're in a deep little pocket of the world in Launceston, Tasmania. We're searching for Nicola Solis. We're looking for his car, which is a Toyota Camry 2006. Uh, we believe that he's here because this is where his wife's grave is, Jill. Jill went, went passed away at 55 years old. Her husband was 61 years old. And eight years later, at 69 years old, he was having issues with dementia and he missed his wife. He had damage to the front left bump, uh, bumper and side panel from hitting a car in a post office. And he also hit a guardrail uh, a couple weeks before buying the new car, the Toyota Camry. We're clearing every body of water in this town. It here, yeah. you see it right there. Ooh, ooh. given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. vehicles filled with rocks. I, th I can see about that much of the top of the steering wheel. There's no way I can see No plate? No plate. All right, I've lost all my gear. We've got Jason and Bill just out on the water, just doing some more scanning of this area. And I'm waiting. So we're 30 to the left, 30 to the right, 1.8 kilometers per hour. We're at 5.1 meters of depth, which you can definitely hide a car in. There's a pile of stuff right here at the end of that. I think it's right here. On the left hand side of the bank, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, maybe five. Here they come now. You found a few more. 
Well, there's a few cars up there. They're old, old, in a pile. Oh, okay. Like, you know, just a pile of junk. Like, you, you, can, you can just discern that they're vehicles by well, the front one. The other ones are kind of piled in, a, you know, in the silt, upside down, on their feet. I mean, on their, on their wheels. But there's, it's, we got some video of it so you can take a look at it. But I, it's not in a place where I would assume that that, uh, that is something of a dump. When there's five cars in a pile, it's a dump from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You know, and that and it makes sense with the story that that uh, Jason's telling us that uh, they they were running cars into there just to get rid of them. Yeah. So yeah, and and it's it, it's not something that's the same. Uh, back in the day, there might have been a straight run into there. Now it's all rocked and and. That was pretty much what she said. Right. You know that road that goes into the caravan park? Yes. It just used to go straight to the water's edge. Oh, okay. They used to just race down the street and launch them. Launch them into the water. Yeah. For so, fun. Yeah, so we pretty much saw cars where we thought we are going to see them. So we're confident we're not going to dive those ones? No. No. Not. not, not. I, 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 let's get to Launceston and really work where the search parameters are. and and increase our circle out like the map shows and I, I want to look at the map with the cameras and, and really uh, have a very clear plan of the day so that we can clear it. Our goal is 10 bodies of water today. It certainly sounds like his driving skills were quite deteriorating. Yeah, two accidents. I mean, it's typical, right? You know, one bang up on a guardrail just touching the guardrail and the second one like just going to the post office and probably smashing a car taking a right hand turn or you know into the parking spot you know trying to get into the parking spot and not being able to see the front end you could tell you a story though about this place yeah, yeah. back in the day when mum was first buried or the remains were sent here back up on the hill there there's like a whole heap of roses and she wanted to be in amongst the roses and dad not long before he disappeared went I don't like the way they look after the roses it's not good enough for mum and moved her to where she is now wow yeah. had a exhumed there is oil in here. It, and you could come in this way. You could come down the hill and in. You wanted to, you'd punch it up this hill and go straight into the deepest part. So we're currently at 1.1 meters. We've got a maximum of 1.4, which is just quite not enough. Where we are now, we're actually at a little farm stay. Uh, this is one of the larger bodies of water near the bottom of the cemetery. So whilst it's unlikely, it's such a large body of water, we really want to clear it. I'm in 0.3 meters of water. I can touch the bottom. One meter of water. So 2.3 meters of water. 2.3 Lake Trevallon Boat Ramp, which is just on the other side of Launceston. It is part of the Hydro Tasmania group, which Nicola actually was the hydro dam electric specialist. And you can come right down and go right in. We're gonna double check the boat ramp. I'm looking straight at the boat ramp. I have nothing on the screen whatsoever. On the bottom, it's a very sandy bottom. It's very clean. The rocky edge with sand on the edges. And I have no I have nothing on either side of the banks. Depth was 13 meters. Yeah. It's quite a deep waterway. The cemetery's up there, right? Yeah. 
but you can come right down this hill come right down this thing and go right into deep water oh definitely not going in there we're gonna come on the inside edge we're gonna go up the river we're gonna go everywhere with sonar that we can possibly go right now we're right on the edge of the shoreline right at an area where there's just plastic cones mm -hmm. and we're we're 10 meters deep which is 30 feet deep three of us have been working on is we've been clearing each ev each and every body of water in Launceston from the center point which is right here okay the cemetery mm -hmm. okay and we've been working our way out and out until we get to the point where we clear everything the only other place that we haven't cleared at this point are two locations that are kind of outside of the game um, if he came in this way would he take a right on route one and go well, I think we need to clear it just in case he went the wrong way on Route 1, mm -hmm. just because of dementia. Mm -hmm. So we'll go and clear those next so that we finish our outside 10-kilometer 10, 10 circle. Yep. And then we're going to finish doing Dead Man's Hollow. And this area around Dead Man's Hollow, which is in the, the, in this, the channel around Route 1, which is the, the track home. So this is our trip. The main so, highway home. Main, main highway home. So, and we don't have a lot of bodies of water, but we do have on the, uh, again, you're traveling on the left side of the road, and I had to remember that when doing this. So, yeah. he's traveling on the left side of the road down, mm -hmm. and so we're going to work all these black circles yep. as if he's coming home. Yep. If he was, uh, and then we're going to have to backtrack and go back and do it back the back way to see if the, the access to these is plausible. And just in case he went down Meander Valley Road, I want to look at Meander Valley Road just in case he went on that old... The old highway. Old yeah. highway, because just because yeah. he, he might have done that before. Yeah. And then we're going to work everything all the way back to Vinegar Hill. And we're going to work Vinegar Hill all the way through, including that one, you know, because of the fact that he had a damage on the left side of his car, mm -hmm. this one pond is right on the edge of the road and it's right at the bottom of his road and that one is really close to the the track yep. so I, I don't know how deep it is but i, I want to make sure we clear that one as well yep. but in the end you know we're going to clear every one of the ponds behind the house i want to clear the river all the way down we, this might take us five days right here i mean there's a lot it's, the bridal track is it's a lot of uh thick blackberries yep um the water does come right beside the road in a few spots um yeah we've had drones up then i've looked at it like it's been always the one place we seem to always go back to it's, well it's it's where the four corners is where he was last seen mm. so yeah it was like somewhere around around that was the last 100 percent sighting he was and then you sort of get up a bit further here and then and what time was that uh 11 30. yeah 11 30 or something it was like and 11 o'clock in the morning and basically on the monday you get yeah. get to that point there you go bridal track that way or goes to railton that way and sort of heads toward nick jr's place or where he used to live but he never used to usually go that way but you just don't know you don't know but we, i want to clear everything here everything across the main the main track okay and you know we, we've cleared Launceston which you know I I really feel that he's drawn here oh yeah, yeah. okay and so and you're drawn here now <laughs> really that's it you know so so to me there, there's a connection to Launceston and then at the same time the ride here was easy for him it's where his Toyota was fixed 
It's where he probably did some repairs. It's where he got some supplies and, and then went home. Mm -hmm. And so the way here is to me the key to finding your dad. I don't think anything else that's getting to the point where we're now just shooting in the dark. Mm -hmm. This is the most logical. Let's clear the most logical first, right? Point one meters. Phone is dead. Didn't bring the phone that actually has the GPS on it, so no clue where I'm at. And so it's interesting. But this river, I hope, is going in the right direction. I could be going off into the Tasmanian wilderness. I have no idea. So I keep going by buildings, so I. If, if it starts to get dark, uh, I will probably try to get back to a building here. But I, I, I am going deep. So this is where I am, South Cottage. Boat is deep in a, behind a dangerous building over a bridge at the end of a road. I don't even know. I just know I'm a long way from where I'm supposed to be. It's not lost. Okay. Morning, Daniel. Morning, William. Some Toyota dealership. That's where Nicola bought his car. That's where he serviced his vehicle. And uh, we're near Woolworths. And he walk to the um, cemetery. cemetery from here. So, and that was what he used to do. He used to drop his car off, walk up the hill to the cemetery, spend some time with his wife, and then go home. Yeah, he didn't spend a lot of time here, is what his brother, his son, his son said. He, he didn't spend, you know, like a, the day here shopping or anything. He might have grabbed a few things, but really wasn't. Uh, he came here to see his wife, yeah. get his car serviced, and go home. Yeah. So we're at the Webster uh, Isuzu Truck Part Company. And I got a, right up on Route 1, on the way in and on the way out, I've got a, uh, at the dealership, I've got a large pond. It looks pretty shallow. The deepest point is on the bank where the damn wall is. There's this boat. But again, that even in that corner, it's only as deep as the uh, road going over it. And, and, and this is our number one concern right here, because there's no fence. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it goes directly in off the road. People driving right here. The, the, if he, he could easily left hand go into there easily, yep. easily. It, but the, it's, by far the most, the easiest of all the, of the, all the ponds and rivers we've looked at so far. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, this is the scenario we're looking for. We just, this is not the one that we're looking for. It doesn't have a deep hole. So this location here, it's got a big question mark on it. We've gone up to the door, knock on the door. Haven't been able to raise anyone, so I'm not comfortable to go on their property without their permission. It makes sense, so you've got this section here. You've got damaged guardrail. Easy entry point here, and it looks relatively deep here. You could go straight in here, no problem whatsoever, float out and sit down. I'm less convinced further up. It looks like there's just too many trees and that top corner looks like it's quite shallow. So again, where the road is, is the deepest point, this area along here. So we'll try and um, contact the owners and get permission. Um, we're gonna continue on our way now on the route home, but we'll put a big question mark on this one so we can come back later and uh, hopefully we can get the uh, owners home. We're on Meander Valley Road. Uh, we're clearing three ponds on the road. Uh, the first one was too small, too far off the road. Second one was right on the road, but very, very shallow. Third one is just off the road with access through some trees coming home. On the way there, it is a straight shot into the pond and has a deep section, but it's a private residence and Dan is being respectful um, and he does not want to go into the pond without permission. It's a ways. 
but uh, you could get all the way here. First kind of thoughts are, yeah, it's, it certainly looks deep enough. But is it possible to even get a car down here? Old track here, down the side of the bridge. Might have been able to drive down here in the day. Flood level's got up pretty high. Just gotta find a way to get in. That's our only problem. It definitely looks like a like a vehicle. Oh blackberries. Yeah, it's a bumper off a car. It is an old bumper. Oh, it's so thick. It's just swallowing me up. Oh, I can't even get to it. Oh, that was most unpleasant. Look how dirty you got. Oh, mate. All in, buddy. What kind of car parts was it? A cylinder head, starter motor, there was the front bumper of the vehicle. They all have a little bit. So we came in from on the Bass Highway up yep. and entered in. This week we actually walked back on this river here on the Quarry Brook yep. and we cleared that because it's too shallow. Yep. Right? Um, this one here is too far from the road and you can't get there from anywhere. So we're clearing that one. Um, this is over the berm. You can't see it. You mm. can't even get to it. Mm. Um, so we're going to call that cleared. These are too small. Yep. All right. And I, we didn't clear this one here. Um, it's on the other side of the railroad tracks. But again, this is all bermed. Yeah. So you can't get over the hill. I mean, it would be a lot. You would. You've got to try to get over. You got to try to get over yeah. it. Yeah. It's not. It's not easy. So I think we clear the big pond on the corner over here. This pond and we work the river under the bridge. The river comes through this park. This road goes there, but it's a no-through road. It's a private, private property. So we're trying to get to that bridge and around the corner to the next bridge so we can actually clear both bridges. Uh, how are you, sir? Good, yeah, team. I'm, I'm team. Bill McIntosh. Yeah, team. Uh, we're here, we're, we want to try to find us access, but we're a sonar team. We actually go in with, with sonar and a boat and we actually sonar the river up to that bridge. I can't gain access anywhere. I'm wondering if there's an access road. I think on your map, on our mapping, we see that there's access through somewhere in here that we could get a boat into. Yeah. We just want to use the dirt road, drop the tinny in, go under the bridge, sonar, down to the bridge, yeah. sonar, check the two yeah. bridges, put the tinny up, done. How's that, Daniel? A little easier than putting in with a little plate, we got concrete pad. This is like special. This is nice. It's nice. It's nice. And it's deep. It's deep. Uh. This is the last major bridge in and out of Launceston. Yeah. And then it's like uh, probably 80 odd kilometers of highway to where dad would usually turn off. Okay. Cars drive on the left and they return on the other side, which is the left on the other side. So a little bit different than US. So we're looking as if it's coming on the way to Launceston, it's on this side where we are right now. So if it was on the way there, that an accident could have possibly occurred. We're looking in this section of it at this time, which is on the right side of our boat. One object here, right there, here. Right there. Right there. Okay, how tall is it? It's only, it's half a meter, if that. So I'm just looking up the map. There is that big sandbank we were looking at to put in further up here. So we're gonna follow up the river uh, just to make sure there's nothing upstream. There are a couple of entry points uh, through farmland though. There's a, a big farm on our right hand side with a big watering system. 
want it cleared up there just in case he's got access to property. The day before Nicola went missing, he was driving around in the neighbour's paddock, which was really weird. And he had no real reason to be there. So if he's driving through one paddock, maybe he's driving through another one. So these paddocks all have access to the water. So we need to clear it. So we got a boat ramp that comes straight into the water. We went from seven meters down to six to 5.5. Uh, at 3.5 directly off the boat ramp, but still nothing uh, showing on sonar of human created objects whatsoever. So there's no car, no square parts. Cleared two major bridges, and now we're headed to small ponds all the way across. So we're just using our sonar ball and we've worked out that this pond is only 1.5 meters deep. So we're in the water now, it's sitting at five meters deep, scanning 30 meters to the shore on my right and 30 meters out that way. Hey, what do you got, anything? Nothing. Five meters deep. Found a toilet. <laughs> Haven't found one of them before. So we're here in another town in Tasmania looking at the Meander River, and it's deep. We're sitting at 2.3 meters, the access straight off from the car park, so it has potential. Under the M1 bridge. They, they look like there's some darker points further up. Right up, well, that was a bit of a bust. something a bit different. We're going to float downstream and we're going to check the deeper bodies of water downstream. Probably just past the bridge, but let's go see what's there. House up on the hill. Yep. And then you got the, the, the space. Yeah, you got a space, and then you got those trees. Yep. The next side trees. That's his and house. And you can just see the root the green roof. roof. I see the roof. That, that's his house. Yeah, I, I can see it from the sky. Now that you say that, I yep. can see that line of trees over there on the left, that straight yep. line. Yep. So I remember that, and I remember that that setup. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's close. Go straight down. Two point six here. Just 
Oh, they're sitting at 3.1. It's this back corner that's really critical. Really want to make sure we get right. As you can see those trees that we see. The trees there. But what else is in this corner, if anything? actually seen the day before driving around in the neighbor's paddock for no reason he had no reason to be there and on the same day when he was talking to the neighbor he was trying to give his dog away so this is all within the anniversary week of his wife's passing of eight years earlier so it feels like a little bit like the dots are joining together scared of you. He's bigger than you. I need more than they need me. Yeah, that's true. Run, Forrest! Run! You can see it drops right down. So much weed though, it's really hard to see. There's an object down there. It's about one and a half meters tall. So even though it looks kind of like a shape of a car, there's the magnet and it just falls straight for it. So it's just weed. Oh, that's another body of water check and it was an important one being so close to the um, the house Two point six meters, two point five. Well, Jace, this is a um, always a roller coaster of emotions, isn't it, mate? Mhm. Mm but it's good Certainly. to clear the good to clear these spots, being so close to home. Yeah. Okay. Careful the battery. Go, hold up, slow down. What are you looking at? You're, are you the, are you the one in charge, everybody? I was say, you're the cranky one. You are a little cranky. Wild Bill. <laughs> Plenty of fish. It 
will look very deep. So it's only one meter deep here. The deepest part I found is 1.2. So I can get my paddle down to there. So she's not very deep at all. So Jace, this is the bowls club that he played at and is quite popular at. And um, so this is right in the town of Sheffield. So we've done all up around the house. We've done all up around the neighbors ponds, all that kind of stuff. So I think the next plan is we're gonna start heading towards Devonport yep. and start working the route where he religiously went and got his fuel and his groceries. So, and see how many accident kind of areas could be along that way. This is a little memorial that you didn't even know about. Saying, Father's love, Nick and Jill Solis. Mum didn't bowl, did she? Yep. Oh, she did she too. She had a memorial shield. I know about that because I presented it a few times. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay. So why don't we go to that boat ramp? Okay. There, in Victoria. Yeah. Victoria Parade. Victoria Parade. And we'll go up, clear that side. Perfect. So, I'm on the edge of the road, corner of the bridge. I got 2.2, I got enough depth to hide it in the mud. We are on Devonport Road at the corner of Formby Grove and the Horsehead Creek. Yep. So we're at one meter. There's no, there's no depth out here. Even if a car floated out here, you'd, you'd most likely see it. We're at the rowing club dock uh, and we are looking at the debris pattern on the ground here coming through. Looks like people have been dumping things in here. Bricks. I guess one square item off to the right here. Nothing on the bottom. Very sandy. Very flat bottom. No undulations. 8.9 meters of water. This is on the way to the uh, Woolworths and the gas station, as well as over there is the uh, son Nick Jr.'s house. So we're double checking this because this road comes right in. It's a restaurant. He could have been going for lunch. Could have just caught, come in here in this, on this side. And I got a lot of large boulders on the ground, a lot of large objects. So we're gonna really check this thoroughly. I got something right here. Get a large object the way we're gonna have to do that a couple times. I got another one right here. And that's the item I'm looking at right there. That pile of stuff. A pile of debris. Not sure what it is. And some square items in it. This is the road in. There are no guardrails. So Bill believes he's seen a couple of targets. Let's see an object. Oh yeah. Something a little bit further out. It's quite long though. That potentially could be a vehicle. Certainly got a very tall shadow. It looks like it could be. There's a piling over there, or an old old bridge um, location where possibly back, you know, 100 years ago they came across on this. So we're not sure if it's actually a vehicle, or if it's or it's one one boulder pile grouping of boulders that are two meters to, to three meters in height. We're not really sure, but we're going to check it because it's right next to the road. And it is also a place that Nicola Sleese actually used to frequent with the kids.
coming back. Now the really big rock, like it was huge rock. Okay. I think I got onto the target we were looking at because it was a bit of a funny shape, like it had a big steep bit going up and it was as tall as me. Yeah. It's and then what and, and the flat object next to it was nothing. Yeah, they were just all rocks. Yeah. This one is right next to the Woolworth. Where he does shopping, where every single week Nicola actually would go get food every 14 days. Like clockwork on his credit card and debit card. And so his son said he, he did it every 14 days. Well, this is the 13th day. Yeah. And he's having a little bit of dementia. Um, he's missing his wife. He's missing his wife. He's been telling the boys at the bowls he's missing his wife. He's not feeling that great emotionally. He's trying it's to like, get rid of his dog. He's trying to get rid of his dog. And at the same time, he's also... His house is up for sale. House is up for sale. But on top of that, with dementia, we've learned that... Uh, they have a difficult time backing up on boat ramps and on, on ramps in, in general. They have a difficult time with reverse. Absolutely. So this is a very critical boat ramp to check. It's not one I've checked at the moment. So this is new territory. Do have an object on the left. Down low I have an, another object out there, but it's, it's up on the sandy bank. It's probably too far away. And that's Jason's, one of Jason's favorite places to eat. He knows it really well. Which means his father knows it really well. Luna Dam. You can drive into it if you have the key. You notice this uh, car up here on the hill burnt out. This is like a dumping ground stuff. It does look like a Toyota actually. Um, Look blue, is silver. Um, that's the headlight number. But it's not the 2006 Toyota Corolla. So we're on the Mersey River. One. The road on the other side comes up. Can't and, remember the name of it though. But it's it's way back there. Yeah. But you can gain access to it. It's at where where you actually can connect is at the creek. Everyone else wanted to go to bed, but no, he's out there, and he didn't even get lost this time. So he's at 2.1 meters. Fairly clear, a couple of big uh, rocks, but that could be from the roadworks here, where they're trying to redo the bank after the last lot of floods. The water was right up over those trees. And town flooded, did it, Jace? Yeah, for the second time in four years. Second time in four years. We've had some crazy floods up in Sydney too, don't you worry. This is insane. To go this deep in the woods, we are like 80, 90 kilometers from home. It makes absolutely no sense. I don't know what that is in there. There is a dark object in there. I don't know what it is. 